What is happening guys? On today's episode of Redbeard's Garage, we're going to be installing the Stage 4 kit on a Predator 212 non-Hemi. This kit should get you around 20 horsepower. The kit that I'm using, I added a few extra parts to it, like the Gauge 1.2 roller rockers. That's going to yield us with about 22 horse engine on Inertia Dyno. We're going to be installing this engine on a drag race mini bike that we're going to be building on the channel in the next week or so, and also on a race cart frame to see how it performs. If you're interested in this kit or any part or tool used in this video, make sure to check out the links in the video description where you can find uh, this whole kit the engine, everything we're using in today's video. So make sure to check those out. They do help the channel out. Without further ado, guys, let's tear this engine apart and make some power. First, I'm going to remove the muffler, carb, throttle bracket, and gas tank. Now we can remove the oil sensor, side cover, governor bracket, and the coil. Remove the valve cover, rocker, push rod, and remove the head. Next, remove the flywheel. We can now remove the side cover to pull out the cam, lifters, and unbolt the rod cap. Slide the piston out of the block and pull out the crankshaft. Now we can remove the governor. Make sure to remove all the remaining washers. The last step of this teardown is to remove the governor gear from the crankshaft. this build we'll be installing a billet flywheel for safety and less drag on the engine. A billet rod for longevity and a flat top piston for higher compression. This kit comes with a 292 lift cam with a max RPM of 9000. We'll also be adding a billet side cover for tighter tolerances and less block flex, head studs and a clear valve cover. The included head has been shaved 65 thousandths, ported and polished, with installed 36 pound valve springs, billet retainers, split keepers, ultra light lash caps, and 28 and a half millimeter and 25 millimeter stainless steel valves. 
We'll be adding to the build a set of gauge Venom Roller 1.2 ratio rockers and chromoly push rods. For the carb, we're going to use a genuine 24mm Makuni. We can use a 1 inch long quarter inch bolt to block off the governor hose without tapping. Use a 7 16 tapping bolt on the oil sensor hole. Make sure to thoroughly clean your block after tapping. Wrap the billet rod in a leather glove and place in a vise. Use a quarter inch 12 point socket to remove the rod bolts. Install the rod and cap bearings by lining up the notches and snapping into place. Lay the crankshaft onto the rod and place a small piece of red plastic gauge onto the rod journal. Install the rod cap by lining up the dots on the cap and the rod and torque down to 170 inch pounds. Start at 60 inch pounds and work your way up 20 inch pounds at a time swapping from bolt to bolt. Once torqued down, we can remove the rod cap and check our oil clearance. The rod manufacturer calls for 25 thousandths. Use the included chart on the plastic gauge to check the width of the plastic gauge. Our rod falls into the right clearance so we are good to continue the build. We need to start prepping the piston. You can see that the piston rings have a letter stamped onto them. These letters go up towards the top of the piston. The two thin rings and oil scraper go on the bottom notch on the piston. Install the oil scraper first, then the two thin rings on top and bottom of the oil scraper. Next, install the black faced ring in the middle notch on the piston. Use a piston ring pull to install the rings. The last ring with the chrome lip goes in the top notch. Slide the crankshaft back into the block. Pull your piston ring compressor and slide the piston and rod into the block making sure the arrow on the piston is pointing down. Make sure to space the gaps in the rings 120 degrees apart. Tap the compressor to ensure that it's seated with no gaps. Use a wood handle of a hammer to tap the piston into the block. Torque down the rod to 170 inch pounds using the previous method. Slide 
slide in the lifters and cam and make sure the dots lined up on the cam and the crankshaft. I use a cut up side cover to check clearance. When checking clearance, look for the cam lobes making contact with the rod, crank, and the block. We didn't have any clearance problems on this build, so now we can install the billet side cover. We need to put in the O-ring on the side cover. Install the two solid dowels in the top and bottom of the block with the tapered side out. Now we can adjust out our end play in the crankshaft. The side cover comes with two thin shims and two thick crankshaft shims. Start with one thin shim. Install the side cover and torque down to 17 foot pounds. Move the crankshaft back and forth to see the end plate. If there's too much end plate, then you need to pull the side cover off and install more shims. On this build, I use two thick and one thin shims. You are looking for around 10 thousandths end plate. Now we can remove the key to lap the flywheel. Use valve grinding compound and turn the flywheel on the crankshaft to mate the two surfaces. Clean the flywheel and crankshaft and install the key. Torque the flywheel down to 65 foot pounds. I use a homemade crankshaft stop when torquing the flywheel down. Now we can install the head studs by backing two nuts against another. Install a new head gasket in the head and torque the head down to 20 foot pounds. Slide in the new chromoly push rods and lash caps. Use some blue Loctite on the rocker bolts. I use a screwdriver to lift the push rods into the slots in the rockers.
Now we can adjust our valve lash to 2000s on the intake and 3000s on the exhaust. You want to adjust your valve lash when the engine is warm, but you still want to adjust it cold and then on the first startup we can readjust when the engine is at temperature. When using ratio rockers you need to run a valve cover spacer or you'll get contact with the valve cover. We won't need the spacer on our build because we're using Go Power Sports clear valve cover. The Stage 4 kit comes with a spark plug spacer so we won't get contact with the piston. I like to set my cool gap to 40,000 from the flywheel magnet. My feeler gauge kit did not come with a 40,000 gauge so I'm using a 10,000 and a 30,000 to space the cool. Now we can install our Makuni, manifold, top plate, and carb. Well guys, let me know what you thought of this stage four build and make sure to check out the links under the video in the description box uh, for all the parts used on this build. Now Go Power Sports is putting out this stage four kit in the next few days, so we wanted to release a video showing you guys how to install all the parts. There was a lot of parts that I added to the list, uh, kind of like the billet side cover, the gauge rockers, those are optional pieces, they don't come with the standard kit. So make sure to check out those links. All the tools that we use in the video are linked down below as well. They do help out the channel. This engine should make around 22 horsepower, so it'll be really interesting to see how it performs on a little mini bike. So what we're gonna do is build a drag race mini bike frame uh, in the next week or so. Uh, but in the meantime, while we're building that frame, we're gonna slap this on a race car frame and go rip around in some parking lots and see what the top speed is and uh, how it performs. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you for watching. Always come back to Redbeard's Garage. God bless, and we'll see you on the next one.